All right, welcome to Ponce Church this morning. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Did you ever uh, get an award? Did you ever get an award for something or maybe earn a reward? Uh, seems like a lot of companies are offering rewards now. Uh, a lot of, uh, almost all credit cards or a lot of them have rewards, you know, on it. Uh, loyalty programs, different things. If you notice my screen up there, I just discovered that Krispy Kreme has a loyalty program, so I may have to join that one, I don't know. That's a few years ago. <laughs> I, I'm surprised Robert's not like 500 pounds because when he was little, I used him as an excuse to go get Krispy Kreme donuts all the time. And uh, so anyway, we both don't eat them any longer, so that's, that's good, but there would have been a time when that would have been important to me. But uh, you know, I, I start thinking about an award and getting rewards or an, or an award. And the first meaningful one that I remember was in high school on my basketball team. And I started, I've, I've shared a little bit of my, my uh, basketball stories before, but, but I was the worst kid on the team in ninth grade. And then I uh, ended up starting in my senior year. And, but before that, the game or two before I ended up uh, starting the game, I was the sub, and I won this sixth man award, and it was the great, you know, when you're the worst kid, and then four years later, your coach says you're the, you were the uh, most important subs that we, you know, the sixth man that came in, yeah, I, I scored a few points, did some good things, you know, and I got this little award for it, and I was like, wow, this is the greatest thing ever. It was huge to me. It was just a little sheet of paper, but it was huge because it, it was four years of hard work, <laughs> you know, uh, day after day, hour after hour. And so, it, and so it meant something to me. So when I discovered at 19 as a young man, when I discovered that Jesus says that eternity is based on a reward system, well, I knew exactly what that meant. I had learned what an award meant. I learned what it took. <laughs> to get that award. So when, so when the scriptures say, we'll look at our text today, when the scriptures say that, that there is an, a reward system for heaven, I understood that. It, I didn't resist it at all. Look at uh, Luke 6.22. What blessings, Jesus is speaking, uh, what blessings await you when people <coughs> hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you are doing something right? You're following the Son of Man, he says. When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy. And this is, this is jumped out at me this week. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. Just based on that scripture, we'd have to say that something about heaven is based on rewards. <laughs> An award or rewards. And I know what I knew what that meant. I was like, oh, I know how I got there. I know what that was. I know. I know what that took. And he says, for great is your reward in heaven. Now see, on earth, that's not the case. God is not a respecter of persons on earth. On earth, he treats everyone exactly the same. A lot of people misunderstand that, oh, God's going to be the same in eternity as he is here. No, he's not. Not in his dealings with mankind. Right now, every human being, because of Jesus, because of the cross of Jesus, because of the crucifixion, because of salvation offered to the world, God treats every human being in mercy and grace. That's what he's doing right now. Mercy and grace. Uh, Jesus, you, you remember, he said he makes his sun to shine on everybody and his rain to fall on everybody. God has blessed everybody with Jesus. He gave Jesus to everybody. That was the best he had. And right now, on earth, God is dealing with mankind through mercy and grace. But if you think that because God is dealing with mankind through mercy and grace today, that he's going to deal with you through mercy and grace in eternity, it's not true. Jesus said eternity is based on rewards. <laughs> See, we misunderstand. We think, oh, mercy and grace, mercy and grace. So there's just going to be mercy and grace. No, no, no. There's not. There's judgment here. 
Mercy and grace is for today. And he's, he's, he's slow to get to that day because he's waiting for anybody else to repent and believe. But there's coming a time where that's going to end. There's a different system in eternity. We don't really like that system too much. You know. <laughs> See, everybody's not treated the same. You're not going to get a participation trophy. You know what those are? <laughs> You're not getting one in heaven. Oh, you made it through, you know. <laughs> There's no participation trophies. There's awards. Or not. Or nothing. Wouldn't that, you know, wouldn't that have been odd had the coach gave me a six-man award and then by, just because he, he wanted to, he had about 11 other ones and he, pe he gave six-man awards to everybody. Well, that would have taught me a different lesson, isn't that right? I'd be like, well, doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> everybody gets the six-man award. But that, that's not the lesson I learned. I got that award. I was like, ooh, I got it, you did it. We prefer, when we think about it, we prefer the participation trophy. We prefer everybody get the award. That seems more comfortable. And it is more comfortable. It's just it's not true. <laughs> That's not the truth. <laughs> it's very popular to tell everybody they're wonderful. It's not the truth. Just, tell, just ask yourself, should we treat everybody the same? Uh, is, that, is that the way it should be? I mean, Jesus talks about people being persecuted, so somebody must be persecuting them. So, is that the way heaven's going to be? That God's going to reward those who are persecuted? Because just before that verse, we read it last week, he said, blessed are the, the hungry and the poor and those that weep now and the persecuted. Blessed are those. They're going to have great reward in heaven. Well, would it be okay with you, does that seem just and fair, if the persecuted and the persecutor just received the same reward? Oh, thanks for participating. You were, you were selfish and mean and, and unkind and persecuted people, but I'm going to give you the same reward as the poor, the hungry, the weeping, and the persecuted. I don't know if you think that sounds good or not, but I'm just here to tell you that's not the way it is. Now, it, when we get our own universe, we can make it the way we want it, but we have to be in his, and I'm saying that his <laughs> eternity is based on reward. Not everybody treated the same. It's just not in scripture. It's just not. And to me, it seems fine. So after he says, blessed are the poor and the hungry, and we, we ended there last week, blessed are the poor and the hungry and those who weep now and the persecuted, great is your reward in heaven. Then he goes on in verse 24 of Luke, more words in red. What sorrow await you who are rich, who have your happiness now, who, uh, what sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will be turned to mourning and sorrow. Just from these verses, see these, these are Sermon on the Mount verses. This is, these are the verses that, that, that's the reason you've never heard a, uh, a Bible series based on every word Jesus ever said, because we conveniently leave out a lot of Jesus' words. You don't hear Bible lessons on those words. That's from the Sermon on the Mount, folks. That's taken right out of the Sermon on the Mount. Whoa. It's not the same. It's not going to be the same. There's a difference. Eternity based on a reward system. Now, <clears throat> Let's, uh, actually, we talked about that. Uh, 
It's there somewhere. All right, in, in Revelation 22, 12, this is where I want to go. I don't know what those other, those other PowerPoints were there. <laughs> They're from last week. Uh, uh, I've totally lost my place, so thanks for coming today. I appreciate you. <laughs> What we're going to say today is eternity is based on a reward system. And listen, we're rewarded. Almost nobody gets this. The world doesn't like the eternity based on reward system. The church doesn't like this part. The reward, listen, the reward are for our deeds. The reward is for deeds. What we do. So there's a reward system, and the reward is for deeds. Let's look at this in scripture. Look, Jesus is speaking. This should be words in red. That has thrown me off too. These are words in red. Jesus in Revelation 22, 12, or the last chapter of the book of the Bible. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my what? Reward. He's bringing my reward. I'm bringing my reward with me to repay who? All people. All people according to their, who can decipher that, uh, those, uh, those letters there? According to their deeds. Deeds? That's what he says. According to their deeds. We don't like that. But that's what he said. Look, I am coming soon. You know, people wonder, is this the last generation? And I always tell them, it's your last generation. You should live like this is the last generation. Because it's the only one you're getting. So it doesn't really matter if this is the last one or not. It's our last one. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people. We like to separate this. Oh, he's not going to do that for everybody. Not me. <coughs> All people, according to their deeds. I don't know if you can get any clearer than that. But in case we misunderstand this, I want to just show the rest of the scriptures in the Bible that back this up. According to their deeds. The reward is according to deeds. Romans 2, 6, Paul writing, he says, he, being God, will judge everyone according to what they have done. done. This is Paul. Amen. This is the leader of grace <laughs> and mercy in the earth. The revelation of grace to the Gentiles. And he's saying, God is coming. Jesus said, I'm coming soon. He says, he will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on what? Listen, folks, I know you may have to just throw out everything you've ever heard before. As a matter of fact, if I could do that, if I could lobotomize, I would. I would just take everything you've ever heard about God out and just start from scratch. Just start from these words of Jesus. I'm coming back. I'm going to reward every human being according to their and then Paul confirms this. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves and who refuse to obey the truth according to those who keep on doing good. Eternal life for those who keep on doing good. He will reward everyone according to what they have done. Lest we still don't get it between Jesus and Paul, let's throw in a couple more. Here's Paul again in 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. This seems to be a theme, folks. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the, what? Good or evil we have, what? Done in this earthly body. See, I'm not just, 
I'm not just picking out some obscure idea. All because we've never heard it doesn't mean it's an obscure idea. <laughs> it's all over the scriptures. Peter joined Ben. He's going he's to join in with Jesus and Paul. 1 Peter 1.17 And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. A couple more. Stay with me. Just these two more. I just... You know, it's, it's just important to, to see that everyone's always thought this about God. King David, the psalmist, Psalm 62, 12, Unfailing love, O Lord, is yours. Surely you will repay all people according to what they have done. His son Solomon, wisest man that ever lived, he's going to join the gang. Proverbs 24, 12, Don't excuse yourself by saying, Look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you. <laughs> he sees me and you. He who guards your soul knows you knew. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> he knows you know. <laughs> Even if you don't want to know, <laughs> he knows you do know. <laughs> what, do, what do we know? That he knows we know. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. What their actions deserve. All right, so that's five voices right there. Five voices saying the exact same thing. That right now, grace and mercy to everybody. No favorites. Eternity, according to what you have done. Wow. <clears throat> Now, we don't care for this in the modern Jesus world. <laughs> see, see, modern, this is ancient Jesus. <laughs> modern Jesus has seemed to change <laughs> quite a bit because we don't get this. Remember I was saying earlier before we uh, started today, before we started the message, I am so happy just to be speaking truth. I don't care if it's popular or not. I have nothing to lose. I just speak the truth. I just want to speak the truth. If it's written, then I say, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's believe that. But we resist this. And here's why or how we resist it. We resist it because we prefer eternity to not be based on what I just read in, in all those scriptures. We prefer eternity to be based on faith alone. Faith without good works. Because how many have ever heard that the Bible says, you're saved by faith alone, right? I've preached it before. I, it's, it's true. It's the truth. And that's all that ever, get pre that's ever, ever gets preached. You're saved by faith alone. In other words, just say you believe and you get a sixth man award. You get your participation trophy. Well, who wouldn't like that? Of course, that's a more popular idea. Except for the six man guy, he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I did all this work and everybody gets the award. <clears throat> in modern Jesus world, the only place deeds come in, the only reason to ever do anything good is to increase the square footage of your mansion. That's all that matters. That the deeds, that's all deeds matter for. Just a bigger mansion. Smile? Everybody smile at me. <laughs> See, when you smile, then your brain says, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> deeds have no basis on eternal life. They only matter if you're going to have a 5,000 square foot mansion or a 10,000 square foot mansion or a 50,000 square foot mansion. That's where deeds come in. And it's so convenient. Everybody gets the award. Everybody gets... If you had to cho choose, which would you rather have? Eternal life or a mansion? <laughs> right? So the eternal life is on a participation six-man award. Everybody gets it. 
But the mansion, oh, the mansion's on whether you're going to do good or not. Yeah. That's just not true. I wouldn't mind if it was true. I think I'd be a more popular human being if it was true. Now, Paul's not contradicting himself, right? When Paul says, you are saved by faith alone, not by works, least any man should boast. Faith without works, you're saved by faith. He's not contradicting himself when he said in Romans 2 that you, all human beings will be judged according to their deeds. He's not contradicting himself. It's just we've thrown out Romans 2 and we prefer Romans 10. But the same guy that wrote Romans 10 wrote Romans 2 before he wrote Romans so you have to interpret Romans 10 by Romans 2. It's the same book, the same thinking, same author, same understanding. He's not contradicting himself. There's a couple of reasons that it sounds like eternity is based on faith alone. There's a couple of reasons, and one is uh, sometimes when Paul was talking about that, he was talking about uh, Christians staying under the animal sacrifices of Moses. And he's saying, like, you don't need that. You don't need any works of the law. You don't need any sacrifices more than Jesus' sacrifice. His sacrifice was perfect. So no works of the law. Sometimes that's what he's saying. And other times, what he's saying is their definition of faith in the ancient church is different than the modern definition of because their de definition of faith, when he says faith of, saved by faith alone, their definition of faith included Romans 2's definition, which says God is going to reward all people according to their deeds. So ancient faith, then, biblical faith, scriptural faith, the faith of Jesus and Paul and Peter and David and Solomon, that kind of faith was one and the same. Faith and good works were one and the same. They, you couldn't separate faith from good works. There was no such thing as just having faith. That's what they understood that we don't see necessarily today. This faith that we have is a quality and it's a substance, it's an entity that can only be proven by good works. It can't be proven by by your words, it can't be proven by your passion, it can't be proven by your convictions, it can't be proven by anything else except your deeds. That's the only thing in the court of heaven that will prove faith, our deeds. They all understood this. We've had a lot of help for 2,000 years losing sight. Faith produces good works. Faith is not faith without good works. Of course, everybody knows James. No, I'm glad you came with James, because I just said, I go, James, too. Were you, were you getting ready to shut me down if I wasn't going to, James? No. All right, we can proceed. <laughs> James chapter 2, verse 17. Of course, James understood this, and, and he understood the church was maybe losing sight of this, so he got real plain. He says, James 2.17, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds, it's dead and useless. In other words, he's saying, look, your, your definition of faith must include good works. You can't have faith. You can't just say faith. It has to include good works. Verse 20 goes on to say, how foolish, can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Verse 24, so you see, we are shown to be right by God, or with God, by what we do, not by faith alone, even though Paul said we are saved by faith alone. James is saying, look, when Paul says faith alone, he's, he's understanding that faith is, is including good works. They're one and the same. You can't separate the two. And this is why. Verse 26, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. If you don't have good works, you don't have any breath in your faith. There's nothing living about your faith. It's just words. 
and you're just sitting in a room with a bunch of other people that have words. And man, that's scary to me. That is scary to me. Eternity is based on a reward system. And the reward system is for our deeds. <clears throat> so it's good deeds done. Now, now this is important. Uh, stay with me here. It's good deeds done. I'm not talking about evil deeds not done. In other words, evil deeds you've resisted or refrained, refrained from doing. When I was a child, I assumed, and I, and I, had, I had a lot of Christian in my family, uh, at least one side of my family was pretty much all Christians. And so I grew up understanding that faith meant and being a Christian meant not doing evil stuff. See, we didn't do what they did. And somehow we were going to get to Jesus and stand before Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you that I wasn't like them people. And that's what I learned. That it was all about what you didn't do. You know, and I used to hear preachers. Have, have you ever heard a Southern Baptist preacher in the 50s and 60s? Have you ever heard these guys? I mean, literally. There's one. I'm just a kid. I'm sitting, I loved I loved church, and I just would sit in the front row. And there's one guy. He was preaching, and he jumped up on the back of the pew, and he ran down the, the top of the pews. Back back and forth. I'm like, oh Lord, what is that? You know? <laughs> so these Baptist preachers, you know, they'd say, we don't drink, smoke, or chew, or run with those who do. And so I thought that was Christianity. <laughs> what you don't do, the evil you don't do, made you a Christian. And I look in the scriptures, and that's not it at all. Because guess what? All the people who don't drink, smoke, or chew, or run with those who do, they all have other stuff that they're doing. Yeah. Judging, condemning, gossiping. All kinds of indulgences. And probably drink, smoking, chewing, and running with those who do on the slide. So eternity is based on good deeds done, not bad deeds refrained from. You know, let's all try and do that. You reap what you sow in this life. So the, the, the less bad deeds you have, the better it's going to be for you. But that's not what eternity is based on. Right. That's true. Eternity is based on good deeds done. See, good deeds are proactive. We instigate these. We initiate them. We set these in motion. Good deeds, they have to be done by us, or they do not get done. All right, let me run through here, quick as I can. When I, also when I'm saying the reward is for good deeds, this is really important. Not doing good, listen, not doing good is evil. This is what we have to get. Doing nothing is evil. In God's eyes, doing nothing. The guy who sent his son to die for us thinks that if we don't do anything good, we're evil. The guy who loves so much that he did the best thing he could for us. To keep Jesus in heaven and let us all perish would have been evil in his eyes. Doing nothing. You'll see this in scripture, refusing to do good, ignoring doing good, passing by while that guy's in the ditch, not doing good, hiding our eyes, the Bible says. That person is cursed that hides his eyes from the poor. Doing nothing is evil. 
Look at this, Ezekiel 1649. I usually read just or 49, but I'm going to add 48 today. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, Sodom and her daughters were never as wicked as you and your daughters. So God is speaking through the prophet Ezekiel to Israel, and he says, Sodom isn't as bad as you guys. In verse 49, he clears it, what he's saying. Sodom's sins were, look, look what Sodom's sins were, pride, gluttony, and laziness, while the poor and needy suffered outside their door. Look at that. Sodom came under judgment not because of the evil deeds that they did, and their deeds were evil. They came under judgment for the good they didn't do. Can you see that? While the poor and needy suffered outside her door, good deeds not done. See, when we're not doing good deeds, when we're not actively doing good works and good deeds, it creates a, a boringness and a vacuum. And that vacuum's going to be filled by something, just like Sodom. They had a vacuum there because they weren't doing good. And then evil was knocking on the door and gladly filled up their life. But God pulls back the curtain. He says, yeah, I know there are sins where this, 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 and this. But here's the real sin. This is the root of their sin. Pride and gluttony and laziness while the poor and needy suffered outside their door. That was the real evil. So let's go back to what Jesus said. Woe to the rich and the happy and the fat and the prosperous and those who laugh now. Now listen, folks. He's not saying woe to them because that's how they are. As a matter of fact, God blessed them with all of that, except possibly for the fat part. But God blessed the rest of it. <clears throat> but in the scriptures, when the Bible talks about fat, it's talking about plenteous and, and abundant. So God is the one who blessed them to be rich and happy and fat and prosperous and to laugh. I like all that stuff. And not woe to them for the evil they're doing. They may or may not be doing a lot or, or very little evil. I don't know. He didn't say. But that's not the, why they're woe. Woe to the rich and the happy and the fat and the prosperous and those who laugh now it has nothing to do with anything except because of the good deeds they're not doing. See, if God has blessed us, he's blessed us because there are some people over here, the poor, the hungry, and they're weeping, they're crying for somebody to help them. And for us to not help them says, woe to you if you do not help. Say, how do you know that? Because estimates are between 25, 30,000 children die every night on this earth because of malnutrition or related complications. 30,000 every night because they don't have food. And we're sitting here within 10 miles <laughs> of tons and tons and tons and tons of food. In my mind, that's why Jesus said, whoa, not because we're evil, not because we're abundant, but because we're doing nothing. Add to that 300,000 women tonight in the United States, 300,000 women will be sleeping, crying themselves to sleep in the bushes, not knowing if they're going to get beat up or raped or killed. 300,000 women. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to sleep in a really nice, comfortable, safe bed. And God says, Rick, you are 
evil if you don't do something about that. If you don't do everything you can about that. All right. Let's, let's end with this. Thanks for staying with me today. I think I may have went a little long. That's another reason. See, when you don't have to, when you, when you don't care if you're popular or not, you can preach all day. <laughs> now, I get bored with myself, you know, after about a half hour, 30, 40 minutes. So I'm like, I can't stand to hear me anymore. All right. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. I'm not going to read it. I've read it many, many times. The sheep and the goats. But if you're going to, if you read that story honestly, you're going to find out that faith had good works. <laughs> that the sheep that were rewarded with eternal life had good works. That's how Jesus determined they were sheep. Their faith was real because they did something. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was naked. I was homeless. I was without shelter. I was sick. I was in prison. Now the goats are very similar to the sheep. Isn't that right? Have you ever seen goats and sheep? They're very similar. See? They're very similar, right? They're both cute. I mean, goats, how could you, how could you hurt a little goat? He's cute. I think goats are cuter than sheep. You ever see them, like, bounce around, you know, on all fours? It's just like, they're cute. Look how, look how close they, they resemble each other. These two are in love down here. They're goats and sheep. If you got a big flock of them, you can't really even tell the difference hardly. But the shepherd knows the difference. He knows. They look a lot alike. They sound a lot alike. They may even have the exact same words. But there's one huge difference in Jesus' story between a goat and a sheep. And what's that difference? Good deeds done. That's the difference. Read it and see. They're very similar. And the goats had a faith very similar to the sheep. They had a faith without good works. And the goats in Jesus' story were rewarded with eternal separation from God. I don't know if you can imagine that. Could you imagine that? The day you meet Jesus, to hear that word, that you are not welcome with me. I can't imagine that. Jesus imagine, can imagine it because it happened to him when he was on the cross. He said, my God, you've sent me away. I can't imagine what that would be like. My goodness, I don't want to experience that. <laughs> and if all I have to do is just get busy doing some good work because my faith in Jesus is real. Amen. It includes good deeds. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hey, thanks for coming. See, even with this crowd, I give you the best stuff I got. This is the best I got. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. Let's uh, thank Facebook for showing up today.